Well, hey there, YouTube. This is Joel from Average Joel's Garage doing a quick video on oil. We're gonna talk, we've talked about oil before, but I went to Costco today to grab my oil because I gotta do an oil change in the Tundra. That video is coming soon. So um, I wanted to talk about viscosity because of people apparently like get that confused. And so if you're doing your own oil or you just buy it, you can even take sometimes your oil to the shop and be like, I want this oil, put it in that car. And that's not a bad thing to do. I would tell people oil is very easy to get rid of and take, it just takes a little bit of time. And I think it's worth it because now the oils last 7,500 miles, which I believe is a real number. Uh, we used to kind of doubt that when synthetic came out, but I think it's real. Like I've been doing that for, I usually do it around 6,000 or I do a winterized, summerized kind of deal. I do it in the March area or uh, in the summer and they'll do it again in the winter. So I'd be like six months, usually whatever comes first. But today I'm gonna do uh, 530 in my Toyota Tundra. I had some 20, 520 in the uh, in my box and I was gonna use that stuff and I double checked, I'm glad I did. So the the weight of the oil is kind of the thickness, and that's what they call like five, there's like 5W, which would be like the weight, and then 30 is like, I guess the range of viscosity of which it can like handle. So when I was a kid, we had 20W50 in my old truck because it, leaked oil and would burn oil if I didn't have a thicker oil, which was again, it was a 1979 Chevy pickup. So it was kind of, you know, old and not anything like these days. Like you, you put that in a car nowadays and I don't even, it'd probably start, but it would run like garbage. They are a uh, pilot, for example, is a newer one, it's 2013, relatively new, 10 years, I guess old. But that one needs zero W20. So it needs the weight to be almost nothing, the thickness, viscosity of it. So. The other one I had, I had 520 and I had 530. And so there's like a temperature range where you used to be able to, when I was a kid, we put 10W40 in our cars because we lived in New Mexico and it was hot as heck. And so they always said, you want to, you know, want it a little bit thicker on, or, you know, more able to handle the temperature range on the top number. So that's what those numbers mean. But really these days, it's more like what does your vehicle specifically call for because they make oil specifically for you know a, a vehicle so like for example um the truck that i'm in now needs 530 but my wife's vehicle the pilot is 020 they're similar engines to some extent but one's like five years newer than the other and so the newer cars have learned to basically you know save money um, on gas and make the engines more efficient and so in doing so they actually need an oil that's a little bit lighter and thinner and they still have the technology and the oil to be able to cool and do everything you're supposed to do to keep it lubricated and working on that vehicle so all that to say if you pop your hood there's usually a little oil cap and it'll usually say on the oil cap 5w30 please or 0w20 or maybe it's 1030 it might be 1040 it's usually in there now if you're not sure open up copilot open up google just hit a quick browser and say what kind of oil works for this exact vehicle say 2008 toyota tundra and it'll say this blah blah, blah takes 5w30 and then if you ask can i put 520 in there it'll say yes in a pinch you can use that it won't cause you long-term damage temporarily but you should use what the manufacturers recommend and i'm kind of to the age now where i totally believe in that as well if the manufacturers made it for a reason the engineers are smarter than us at least i like to give them that credit put it in there what they're supposed to have and then your vehicle if you change it easily and often enough like that case the box i just did uh, is 35 bucks for that oil for 10 quarts that's going to give me basically about two oil changes that's pretty cheap that's what it used to be on regular oil this is fully synthetic oil so it will last longer and i'm not dripping oil or leaking it anywhere so i'm confident i've been using this oil for a long time and i'll do another quick video uh, just a short on the toyota engine because that's uh, slanted which is what we had in our 2001 sienna if you happen to have that engine get some synthetic oil in there asap because what happens is, is the way the engine's tilted you get a bunch of uh, carbon stuff that's like kind of blow by gases that get stuck and it's uh it's just like the oil because it's usually called for conventional oil for whatever reason it would get stuck in the back of that valve cover and cause some issues and so when you want that cleared out all you do is put some mobile one in there and you do it a couple times and it actually would clean itself out which is really awesome because most things don't do that but mobile one actually will take care of that for you so if you happen to have that particular vehicle or that engine trust me i did it in our van 
years ago and it was the best thing because I got it used and my neighborhood used regular, regular conventional oil in it and it was a great van I love that van um, but the only reason I got rid of it honestly is because I moved to Colorado and I need something like all-wheel drive because we were sliding all over the place but all that to say that is actually a great type of van in that 2001 and that oil was perfect worked it just took everything out of there that I had in that valve cover because I wasn't sure why it was happening but when you have an engine that's tilted like this then this back side is getting oil pooling and it can cause like I said a lot of issues and so that was one of the easy fixes is just use a different oil done so guys that's my oil talk for today if you haven't changed your oil this is probably a good day to think about it go go to Costco buy some you need an oil filter you can get those at Walmart you can get them on Amazon I usually have two or three and in the truck that usually calls for a pH 36, I wanna say 14. But the coolest thing is the 36 part of that number is the size of the mouth that grabs on on the oil filter, and then the 14, or whatever is the like kind of the depth. And so the 3600 is exactly the same mouth size, so it fits on there perfectly. But what's cool is you have the, uh, the other one is a taller can, so you can actually put a little bit more oil in there get a little bit more cooling on that oil, a little bit more filtration, uh, as far as because there's more air to pass over it. It's not like magic. When someone, you couldn't call that a hack, but I mean, it's a different mod that you could put on, and I've been doing that every single one of my Toyotas that had the 36 series. I use the 3600 oil can, fits on there just perfect. No problems. I use a little bit more oil in there, which is, like I said, gives me a little more filtration. And then the last tip I'll put on there that I like to do is there are metal pieces sometimes that can be introduced inside your oil from your engine doing whatever engines do. And so if you happen to have one of those rare earth magnets, you can get them on Amazon, pack of them for like 14 bucks. Stick a couple of those on the bottom of your oil pan and one or two like on your oil filter. I don't know if they're ever gonna do anything to, you know, to verify that, but I know when I take my oil plug out of my transmission fluid, the one that has the magnetic piece, there's always a little bit of crap on there. So. You might as well just grab whatever metal shavings happen to show up and take those. Just get them out of your engine oil and you may save yourself miles down the road. So guys, that's my talk for today. Thanks for listening and please like and subscribe as always and I'll talk to you next time.